Hey, Warrior Saints, welcome to St. George, where we unleash great by living a crucifixional life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. So decisions, making good decisions, is something I think that each and every person wants to do. We aspire to be good decision makers. I don't know that I've ever heard someone say, you know, I, I, I want to make poor decisions. I want to make decisions that ruin my life. I don't think we hear people say that too often. Within us, we all want to be good decision makers. But in the landscape that is our current world, it's hard sometimes to make good decisions. There's so much confusion, so much noise, so many competing options that making good decisions is often something that we become, uh, that we struggle with, that we find very difficult to do. And we even may find some trepidation. You see, there are, there are so many events and so many uh, opportunities to go somewhere, to see someone, to, to go out. There are so many different competing voices in our Facebook feeds and in our Instagram posts telling us all kinds of things that we should think and believe and so on. Sometimes we make decisions by, by default. We feel, we feel obligated. You know what? I want so-and-so to like me, so I will decide to do this or I want to feel accepted, or I don't want to feel guilty, so I will make this decision. Worst of all, sometimes we don't make decisions for ourselves at all, but we allow the world and others to make decisions for us. Decision-making has become a, a sea that is turbulent, and our ship, if you will, is tossed to and fro while making good decisions. In 1936, German-American psychologist Kurt Lewin came up with a new formula, a formulaic expression to talk about behavior, human behavior. And it was revolutionary at the time. It was something that psychology hadn't really formulated quite like this. And he says, behavior, human behavior, is a function of the person in his environment. Human behavior, the way we act, the way we behave, is a function of the person, the personality, in their environment. He's saying to us, Professor Lewin, that, that the decisions we make, the way we act, it's not just something that is solely within my personal constitution, my personality to make, but my environment also affects that. Behavior is a function of the human person in his environment. And often we think, you know, well, the environment that I live in, it's not that bad, or I can control it. I can control the environment within which I live. I can control the way the things I see affect me just by sheer force of will. Oh, really? You think so? How about all of you who look at pornography? <coughs> I mean, I don't, I don't use pornography, but I've seen enough to know, and I've heard enough confessions, that if we look at that stuff, we look at our wives a little bit differently. Do you not? Have you not thought at some point that maybe we could get my wife to try that, that we saw this aberrant behavior in the show? Think about all of the Facebook ads and the news ads that you see in all of your feeds and on Instagram. You don't think that that affects you? Where they tell you what to eat, they tell you where to go, and they tell you what to buy, and they tell you how to think. And they tell you to spend all of your money on all of the stuff that you need. And you think, well, that doesn't affect me. Really? How many of you have no debt? How many of you do not owe money for things that you have that you haven't fully paid for? How many of you have been, you know that person, you're with a friend who's just the sourpuss, always, always talking bad about other people or a specific person, always like thrusting anger on another person. Have you ever noticed that when you spend time with them, that you start to become a sourpuss? Have you not noticed that the person that they badmouth all the time soon enough becomes someone you badmouth all the time? You see, our personality is strong. 
but it is not the sole source of making good decisions. So is our environment. And so what that means to us, beloved in Christ, is that we have to take control of the environment. We have to be mindful of what our eyes see. This morning's Gospel, chapter 1 of John, Philip says to Nathaniel, We found him. We found the Christ. Come and see. We found the Christ. Come and see him. And so as we approach to Jesus, as we approach the Christ, the Lord of all, to see him, what is it that we see? We see, most importantly, his greatest instruction, his great teaching. And he says to us, I love this. This is one of my favorite verses of, of all of the Sermon on, on the Mount. Chapter 5, 6, 7 of Matthew is called the Sermon on the Mount. And right in the middle, chapter 6, verse 22 and 23, Jesus says, The eye is the lamp of the body. The eye is what gives light. You know, a lamp, you turn on a lamp, it gives light. The eye is the lamp of the body. And if your eye is sound, the body will be full of light. And that is to say to us that if our eyes are seeing good things, if our eyes are seeing things of the Lord, things that are of value, things that matter and that are, are healthy, good, great, then our whole body will be filled with light. It's a good thing. If we look at things that are good, we will feel things that are good. But, <laughs> he has a but. He says, but if your eye is full of darkness, then your whole body will be filled with darkness. And if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And that is to say... That if we look at things that we might not be looking, should, uh, that we should not be looking at, that indeed it will have a profound effect on us. And all we need to do is go back to our previous three examples of pornography, internet advertising, and sour people to see that indeed the environment, the things our eyes see, do have an effect on our behavior and the decisions that we make. And so we have to be mindful to take control of our environment. And this is a beautiful opportunity right now. This is the first Sunday of Lent. Lent is a time of purification, a time to cast off all of that stuff so that we might be filled with the good things. We might be filled with the things of God and not the things of the world. And so in order for us to make good decisions, we must be in control of our environment. And so now we come, as we always do, to the practical point on the way of the warrior saint. And I'd like to offer these three parameters for making good decisions and controlling our environment. Three, you know, three ways that we should make decisions. Three things that we should keep in mind as we, as we decide what we're doing in life. And those three parameters are as follows. Number one, trust your gut. In the words of Leroy Jethro Gibbs, always trust your gut. There's a tingling inside of you. You know that some decisions are right. You know that some decisions are wrong. In your gut, when you are sitting with a person who is the sourpuss that badmouths everybody else, and you can feel that you're getting sucked into it, you know inside you somewhere that that is not right. And your eyes and ears, in that case, are seeing things that are not of God. And if you don't act, if you don't move, you will become the sourpuss with the people that you sit with and spend all your time with. You cannot avoid like this. Remember a couple of weeks ago we talked about putting a sponge in a bucket of water. It cannot do anything but absorb, right? And so if you surround yourself and put yourself in the environment of sour people, beloved, you will become sour. There is no other option for you. So trust your gut when you hear that John Doe or Sally Doe are talking evil words. Excuse yourself. Trust that tingle. Some say that, you know, in science they say that is um, subconscious. Maybe. The Bible says that it's the Holy Spirit tickling your heart to say get up and get out. So number one, trust your gut. I, I will tell you this. You may not always be right when you trust your gut, but nine times out of ten you will be. Trust your gut. Number two. Be decisive. Act. 
Better to be decisive and make a mistake than to sit on the fence of indecision and do nothing. When you sit in indecision, you become inactive and nothing happens. When you make decisions, think about them, not recklessly. We don't ever want to make a decision by the flip of the coin. We want to think about the decisions we make. We want to strategize, am I going to do this, what will happen? Or if I do that, what will happen? But once we have come to a decision or a conclusion, it is time to act. It is time to decide and be decisive. Make that decision quickly, powerfully, and strong, strongly. You think about the internet advertisements that we have. Somewhere inside of us, you can see how a decision, it, it couples with two of the, these first two uh, practical points. When you see an ad, your gut says, nah, I shouldn't do it, I shouldn't do it, I shouldn't do it, I don't wanna buy it, I shouldn't do it. And you're tempted, you feel that temptation. Be decisive. You've made the decision, I don't have the money to buy it, I'm not gonna buy it, turn off your phone. Don't buy it, be decisive, act quickly. And lastly, most importantly for us as warrior saints, as in everything we do, as in life that Christ has called us, is to be, number three, crucifixional. And crucifixional means to sacrifice for the sake of another. That's what being crucifixional means. Remember, Jesus didn't just die on the cross. Jesus died on the cross for our salvation. Jesus offered himself on the cross, sacrificing himself for us not just because, for us. And to be crucifixional, to follow Christ, is to sacrifice for other. And guys, and ladies too, you think that when you look at pornography, it doesn't make a, a, an issue in your mind, but indeed it does. Indeed it does. You begin to look at the other human being as meat, as non-human, and so, how difficult is it for you? I don't know. May God be with you to stop this habit. But you do so for the sake of other. Now listen to this. I've heard a lot of confessions in my life from men and women. And pornography is rampant. But let's try this one. Try this one. Fellas who think that you can conquer this of your own Personality. Let's just say, for today's sermon, I'm willing to concede that within you, you are able to look at pornography and not have it affect you. Let's just go with that. I think that's false. But for argument's sake, in this sermon only, let's say that. Is that crucifixional? Because look what happens. What happens to that woman over there? He doesn't love me. I'm no longer attractive. I'm not a value. I'm not worthy. And those are the things that they say, and those are the things that they feel. How much crucifixional, how much more crucifixional can you be than to sacrifice your own simple, quick pleasures for the sake of another human being? That's what it means to be crucifixional. And please, brothers, don't think that I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. Very often I am, but right now I'm not wrong. Be crucifixional in your life in regards to the things that you see for the sake of others. Beloved in Christ, we have been called by God to be warrior saints, to be strong, powerful, wonderful, great Christians. To do that, we have to make good decisions. We have to be willing to make good decisions. We can't flit about with every advertisement that we see in Facebook and Instagram. We can't surround ourselves with sour people all of the time. And we can't certainly look at the filth that is pornography and things like it. So remember those three steps. As we are entering the next five weeks, four weeks of our series on how to make good decisions, remember that Christ has told us what goes in fills the vessel. If bad goes in, it is darkness. If good goes in, it can be light. And in order to control our environment so that we might make good decisions, trust your gut, be decisive, and always, always be crucifixional, sacrificing yourself and your desires for the sake of another. I promise you this. As your Father in Christ, I promise you this with 
great confidence. If you do that, you will begin to become a good decision maker. No one's perfect, but you will become a good decision maker. Having confidence, gaining, gaining confidence and, and security that if I follow these parameters, my decisions will become good. May our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the light that we wish to fill our souls with, bless and keep you. Hey, hey, Warrior Saints. Thank you so much for being with us. For more information on the Warrior Saint movement, visit us at warriorsaints.org. And I'll see you on the way of the Warrior Saint.